Hey everybody, half an unboxing today. This is the Elephone A5. It is a triple camera device, I believe. So you see the spec, 6.2 inch Full HD display, 4,000 mAh battery, so that's good. MediaTek MT6771, four gigs of RAM, 64 gigs of internal storage. And then you have triple cameras, 12 megapixel plus five megapixel plus a 0 0.3. So that must be a depth sensor, so. I saw um, product renders of this phone and it looks very, very similar to the Huawei P20 Pro. Oh, I really like this color. So I'm gonna put the phone to the side first. We have a quick start guide. You have a European China charging brick, a charging cable, USB-C, and then you have a soft jelly case. So there's a screen protector already applied. So yes, this phone, um, obviously looks very very similar to the Huawei P20 Pro. So you have a fingerprint sensor on the side and then it's the circular power button that's been on the last few Elephone devices that I actually quite like and a rather big notch but at least there's two selfie cameras up front. So this one has five cameras. Let's put it into the case just to see. Okay pretty snug fit and the case is very clear to leave the back you know, so you can still kind of see the color. So anyway, you guys know the drill. I'm gonna play with the phone and I'll be back. Hey guys, I'm back. So I've used the Elephone A5 for the past two days as my second phone. So we'll go through the specs really quick. You have a 6.2 inch display, 1080p resolution. So, so the exact resolution is 2246 by 1080. You have a Helio P60 chipset inside from MediaTek. It's an octa-core processor. This phone runs Android 8.1 right now, but Elephone claims to update it to 9 later, but we'll see. I highly doubt it. You have a uh, supposedly triple camera setup on the back with a 12 megapixel main shooter, a 5 megapixel secondary lens, it's for depth sensor, and then a third 0 0.3 megapixel camera. Now, I really have no idea what this third camera does, and I've actually tried to cover it up when I use the camera and it really did not affect anything at all. So likewise with the front, you supposedly have two selfie cameras, but to my knowledge, it's only really one because I covered the second camera and it really does not affect anything. So let's talk about the good really quick. Build quality is actually really good for a $200 phone. You have these aluminum sides that actually feel very sturdy. It actually feels a little bit more more metal than the sides on like the Vivo Nix Dual Display Edition. And you know, just a week ago, I tested the Honor 10 Lite, that budget phone from Honor, and that phone felt very plasticky all around. So in terms of build quality, this is better. Of course, it's not an original design. This back is completely copied from the Huawei P20 Pro, but you know, it's not original, but I still like it. I kind of like this gradient color scheme. Triple camera setup, not much of a bump. So overall, it's a very nice feeling phone in the hand and you have a headphone jack. So the left side of the device is actually completely clean except for a SIM tray. And on the right, you have volume rockers and I really like this circular power button right here. I, I dig this. And then you have this side fingerprint reader that's actually pretty accurate and pretty speedy. And on top of that, if you double tap on the fingerprint sensor, you can launch app. So when I have it set so it launches the calculator, but you can actually launch any app of your choosing. If you go into settings and you go to shortcut buttons and then you can add any apps. You can open Twitter or, or like the Google Play Store if you want. So this could be useful for launching WhatsApp, WeChat, you know, apps that you have to open quite a lot. So there's a pretty big notch. I'm a little bit disappointed by it because Elephone, I'm assuming they're using this big notch because they want to put two selfie cameras in there, but the second lens is probably not real. So instead, this notch just takes up a lot of space. 
and then you look at the notification icons, you only have you only have room for two icons. So this notch just kind of takes up a little bit too much space. At least it's been optimized so that when you swipe from here, you can still bring down the notification tray. Because previous phones from Elephone, when you swipe down here, nothing happened. So at least they fixed that part. So as mentioned earlier, this phone runs Android 8.1 with uh, Elephone's UI on top, and I actually really like it. I like Elephone's uh, app icon. They, they look pretty aesthetically pleasing to me. You have a swipe up tray of app drawers and then no bloat whatsoever. Like just these are all the apps. I mean, I installed all these apps on the bottom, but otherwise it's a very clean phone, pretty zippy. So my review unit has four gigs of RAM with 64 gigs of internal storage, but you can also get one up to six gigs with 128. So this Kirin P60 chipset, you know, it's not a flagship chipset by any means, but it's actually, not bad, it's a lot better than the um, Kirin 710 that was in the Honor 10 Lite that I tested like a week ago. So check it out, when you play Hero Hunters, which is a really graphically intensive game, the default graphics setting is actually high. You can even go up to Ultra, but if you go up to Ultra, it becomes very jerky, very choppy. So it's best to go back to, see it's very choppy right now because it's on Ultra. So it's best to jump back to high, and once you jump back to high, then it's completely playable. So that's a win over the Kirin 710, which can only play at regular. Even if you go into high, the graphics starts getting really choppy. So you know, this is no Snapdragon 845, but this is about on par with the Snapdragon 660. So you notice that when you play games or watch like Netflix, there's a little bit of letter boxing on the left side, so it um, the graphics does not go around the notch. There's just a little black bar. So that kind of sucks. That actually makes the screen a lot smaller, and also doesn't really fit aesthetically. So you notice the corners right here are very curved, but right here it's a very blocky, sharp corner. So if you care about little things like design language, this is just not a like clean look. This just doesn't, doesn't look that aesthetically pleasing. So this phone has a swiping navigation that's uh, pretty intuitive. It's kind of you swipe up from the middle to go home, you swipe from the left side to go back, and you swipe from the right to go into app overview. Of course, you can use navigation buttons if you want, but I just prefer to use swiping navigations. So now let's talk about this camera. So let's just ignore this triple camera thing right away because I'm just really sick of these smaller Sengen brands being a little bit kind of embellishing the marketing. But once you ignore the fact that this isn't really a triple camera, I think the camera is pretty decent. It's about on par with the Realme U1 that I tested. That was also $200. So this is like obviously the most entry level smartphone cameras. And at this price range, I think it's okay. You're able to take panorama photos that it, it's a little bit hard to use, but then once you get it right, you can actually stitch together some pretty impressive shots. So I had to sneak a picture of this dude in the back because I was trying to take a bokeh image. And you see the bokeh shot's not bad, so I think at the very least the secondary depth sensor is for real. Like the edge detection around this guy is pretty natural. And now on top of that, you can change the bokeh effect afterwards in real time. You can also have this 3D setup that allows you to See, move the photo around, kind of get this little 3D effect. It might be hard to see here. Let me find another picture. We'll find Groot. So you see, so this is uh, pretty cool. So that means the secondary depth sensor is in fact detecting the background and differentiating the background from the subject. Now, like many budget phones, the camera of the Elephone A5 do struggle with exposure. So a lot of times, you see this shot, you either have to deal with overexposure right here, like this is completely blown out, but the rest of the street is pretty well lit, or if you dial down exposure, so now you can see the, uh, this rack of pajamas here. Now it looks good here, but then now the street here is too dark. So you consistently have to choose between something that's well lit in the middle, but all the lights are blown out, or something like this that looks, you know, clean right here but too dark in the middle. I do think the camera shutter is actually really slow. So a lot of times when I'm trying to take photos, it will come out blurry just because my hand moved a little bit too much. So sometimes you just have to take two or three photos 
just to get it right. Like as long as you keep still and you have some decent lighting, you can get a pretty punchy shot. But a lot of times it will just end up like that. So this is a camera with not a lot of room for error. You just kind of have to like put more attention into taking photos than you would with a smarter phone with a smarter camera. So finally, there's a 4,000 mAh battery inside this phone and battery life has been excellent. So like I said, I've been using it for the last two days. So I basically have not charged the phone since I unboxed it. Um, it's still a 28% after two days. Now granted, I didn't use this phone heavily because it was my second phone, but still 28% left after almost two full days of constantly being on and you can see I took a bunch of photos, I played some games, went on Instagram, I downloaded like several apps, so I put this phone to use and it still has 28% battery life. So if I were to use this phone normally, it should definitely last you an entire day. 4,000 mAh battery. Alright, you guys know what's next. Time for a video speaker test. So there's a bottom single fine speaker grill right here. Alright, you guys know what's next. Time for a video speaker test. So we'll go up to 50%. Single bottom fine speaker. Very easy to muffle. We'll go up to max volume. So yeah, pretty below average speaker. The display looks pretty clean though. This is an LCD panel, but viewing angles are pretty good. So now overall, this is a pretty decent phone from Allophone, but I can't really recommend it because at $200, it's still a little bit pricey. Like, I feel bad for these smaller Sengen brands such as uh, Elephone, Okitel, Liegu, Doogie, Blue Boo, and a lot of them are dying out. Like I don't even hear from Maze anymore. So the reason for that is because like a year ago, two years ago, they can pump out something like this and sell for $200 and people will buy it because, you know, all the other phones from bigger name brands are a little bit more expensive. Like even Xiaomi phones, which are pretty cheap, are still like $350, $400. But then now, Xiaomi has launched the Poco phone, Oppo has launched Realme, Huawei has launched Honor, and all three of these sub brands are really selling cheap phones for like 200 bucks, 250. So if you ask me, do you want to get the Elephone A5 for 200 dollars when you can get an Honor Play for like 250 or a Realme U1 for 250 or 220 actually? Uh, the answer is no, you have to get those phones because they come from a bigger brand, so they just have better components, like the phone is just more polished all around. But I do think this phone looks very nice, but just unfortunately the market is just so tough. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching.